Hey Spartans, I'm Jake. And I'm Jessica. It's Valentine's Day weekend and this is our first official episode of Channel 101. We've been working hard in A101 to bring you the latest in Spartan news. In this week's show, we have a variety of segments for you, including the presidential change of power recap, information about the COVID-19 vaccine, and a local business. Also in today's show, Ravenade talks about some of her favorite video games to play online and Jameson sums up Super Bowl 55. From the studio, our live broadcast starts now. Joe Biden has been president for 23 days now. However, there was an uncertainty right until he was inaugurated whether the transfer power would be peaceful. Hello, my fellow Americans. I'm here to give a quick recap of the election and let you know what's to come in the good old U.S. of A. It's November 3rd. Things are looking good for former President Donald Trump. He's leading in a lot of key battleground states and he holds a meeting where he claims that he has won the election. We were getting ready to win this election Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. His confidence is short-lived, however, because after states start to count mail-in ballots, both Wisconsin and Michigan flip and Joe Biden takes the lead in those states. Election night turns into election week and Trump's lead shrinks smaller and smaller every day until Biden manages to flip Georgia and Pennsylvania. At this point, Biden has enough projected votes to win the election and is declared the winner of the election by most media outlets. Due to how close the races were in a lot of states, certifying the election results took a very long time. Georgia didn't certify its results until November 20th, which was more than two weeks after election night. The Electoral College voted on December 14th and Biden's win was official. Biden ended up with 306 votes to Trump's 232. Biden was inaugurated on January 20th and is now the President of the United States. The presidential election wasn't the only election that happened, though. Democrats and Republicans were also fighting for seats in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Polls from early voting had predicted a blue wave, and Democrats were expected to win an easy majority in both houses of Congress. This blue wave ended up being more of a blue puddle, though, and Democrats ended up losing a lot of races they were expected to win. Democrats still had a decent majority in the House of Representatives, but were still fighting for control of the Senate. Before the runoffs in Georgia, Democrats were outnumbered in the Senate 48 to 50. Georgia had a runoff election for the last two Senate seats, and that didn't take place until January. Democratic candidate John Ossoff and Democratic candidate Raphael Warnock ended up winning their respective races. With 50 Democrat seats and 50 Republican seats, the Senate was tied. And when a tie happens in the Senate, the vice president gets the tiebreaker vote. With Kamala Harris as vice president, Democrats have a majority in the Senate. Democrats currently have control of the presidency, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. So what does this mean for America? Socialism? Communism? Nope. Democrats plan to address issues like universal health care, COVID relief, police brutality, and climate change to name a few. But I can assure you a moderate like Joe Biden will not turn the US into the USSR. Of course, I'm not an expert, so please do your own research and get involved in politics. You can't vote, but it's never too early to get educated. There's your rundown of the 2020 election. I've been Jake Reinstein. Thank you, America. With this being one of the most controversial elections since George W. Bush beat Al Gore in 2000, Biden still has a lot of work to prove his competency as president to many Americans. Another controversial topic is the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccination. I'm, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to get in and get the shot especially when so many people are waiting. The COVID-19 vaccination works by teaching your immune system how to recognize and fight COVID-19. It also protects you from getting sick with the virus. There are currently two authorized vaccines, the Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna vaccine. There are three vaccines in the phase three clinical trials. One of them does not require two doses. When I went to get my shot, uh, it was very painless. Um, in fact, I didn't even really feel it at all when she put the shot in because the shot has to go into the muscle. So she gave it to me and it was very pain free. Um, and then I felt it probably a little bit later at night. Um, 
started to get a little sore. They have you pick your most dominant arm. Some have experienced non-severe allergic reactions within four hours after getting vaccinated, such as a fever, chills, headache, and fatigue. The vaccine takes a few weeks to build immunity, so you can still get COVID-19 after being vaccinated. I didn't want to take that risk of exposing my older relatives to anything, especially if I'm asymptomatic. I don't want to um, give it to someone without me knowing. I would feel horrible if I ended up having, having it, not having symptoms, and ended up giving it to someone. More than 408,000 people in the U.S. have died from the coronavirus. Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci says the U.S. could start vaccinating 1 million people per day. As you may know, getting the vaccine is a long process, so please stay safe, social distance, and wear your mask. All the info provided is derived from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. Next Thursday, classes are online for L through Z students. The district buildings will be closed so that Lakeview staff can get their first round of the vaccination. Now that people can dine inside restaurants, if you want a local place to go do your schoolwork on your asynchronous days or catch up with your friends over a fresh cup of coffee, check out Cafe Rica downtown. Right now we're in Cafe Rica. Uh, we are a coffee shop in downtown Battle Creek. We have been in business since 2016 and we've been operating a coffee shop since 2018. We started out selling bags of coffee online, and um, before then our mother would bring back bags of coffee from Costa Rica, where she's from, and that just kind of transpired into what you see in it. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected our business in multitudes of ways. Obviously, it has limited how many people we could have inside, or even if we can have anybody inside. We've fluctuated between having uh, half capacity, carry out only, back to half capacity. I would like to think that it has actually positively impacted us because during the first shutdown we had an opportunity to narrow down our menu uh, food-wise and we got to focus on quality, customer relationships, which is the biggest part of our business. The community has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, pretty much from day one, we've had people ask us, you know, what can they do, how can they support us? Like they have a Facebook group called the Carry Out Club that is um, actively encouraging people to share what they got from a restaurant. I would recommend just doing whatever you can. Shares and likes are free, and that's always uh, a great way to show support. Stay tuned for features on more local businesses to support. One of the ways we have been able to keep in touch with people is through online gaming. Games like Minecraft, Fortnite, and Jackbox have recently started to grow fame because of their ability to be played with friends. And I can't see why not. I'm most definitely looking for any source of social interaction. So today, we'll be looking at two free games to play with your friends. Number one, Genshin Impact. I seriously have been seeing this game all over my For You page, which initially led me to play the game in the first place. Genshin is a Chinese action RPG. It's a fantasy open world environment game that shows common features to Breath of the Wild, but also has an action based system using elemental magic, character switching, and a gacha system. Genshin is free and available on platforms such as PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android, and Microsoft. Number 2. Among Us Among Us is an online multiplayer social deduction game, kind of like Mafia or Werewolf. Initially, players are either crewmates or two imposters. Crewmates do tasks around the ship and try to find out who the imposter is, while imposters kill off crewmates and sabotage and also try not to get caught. Due to its popularity, fans developed their own mini-games while messing with the in-game settings. Games such as Hide and Seek and Cops and Robbers. Among Us is free to play on iOS and Android, while it pays to play on PC. Online games aren't the only games taking place now that winter sports have been reinstated. Good luck to all of the Spartan winter athletes. Even though some of us only tune into the Super Bowl for the commercials and the halftime show, this year's game was of interest to many people because of the quarterback showdown. On February 7th, the Kansas City Chiefs lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Super Bowl 55. The Bucks were led by Tom Brady while the Chiefs were led by Patrick Mahomes. The Bucks, playing on their own field, won 31-9. The Chiefs receivers did not catch the ball, which ultimately cost them the game. Patrick Mahomes threw for 270 yards while completing 26 passes on 49 attempts, and he ran for 33 yards. Mahomes also threw two interceptions. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was the Chiefs' top rusher with 64 yards throughout the entire game. 
Travis Kelsey, who was the top receiver for the Chiefs, had 10 catches for 133 yards. The Chiefs had a total of 350 yards as a team. Tom Brady threw for 201 yards while completing 21 of his 29 pass attempts. He threw three touchdown passes en route to his 7th Super Bowl win and 5th Super Bowl Most Valuable Player. Leonard Fournette rushed the ball 16 times and had 89 rushing yards, while Ronald Jones II rushed for 61. Rob Gronkowski had 6 catches for 67 yards. As a team, the Buccaneers had 340 total yards. Times are unprecedented. The outcome of the Super Bowl was a little bit more normal. Tom Brady won another Super Bowl, and this is the same kid who was skinny, looked unathletic, and just didn't look like a football player coming out of college. He was a sixth-round pick and has done more than most quarterbacks in their entire career. As for Patrick Mahomes, the future looks bright. He's young, so he's got plenty of years left to make a case for being one of the best quarterbacks ever, and he's already won a Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes has a lot of time to become one of the greatest quarterbacks, but there isn't a lot of time for you to get your grades up before the end of the trimester. If you're in need of some tutoring, members of the National Honor Society are available to provide virtual tutoring sessions. There's no need to sign up to get help. Make sure you are reading the weekly student newsletter for information on tutoring, schedule changes like upcoming half days, and other events going on around LHS. That's all for us this week. I'm Jessica. And I'm Jake. Have a great weekend, Spartans. And happy Valentine's Day.